Hey there, good morning, Million Voices. Welcome to today's Pause to Pray. My name is Stephanie Schindler, and I'd like to welcome you to join me today in Washington, D.C. As I'm coming to you from my second home today, as you guys know, we live in the Atlanta, Georgia area, but we have just very recently, because of Adam's full-time job status here in the city of Washington, D.C., we have just recently acquired an apartment in the city. So I'm going to share with you guys, as people are jumping on, share with you our view from our apartment. Yes, that is the Capitol back behind me. Got a wonderful view up here. I don't know, you probably can't see, it's pretty distant back there, but you can actually see the Supreme Court of the United States of America right there. So, yep, this is our very special view of Capitol Hill that the Lord has blessed us with. And um, yeah, we are in the city. Oh, let's see if I can show you all the way down to the Washington Monument down there. Welcome to our, our Washington DC apartment. <laughs> Welcome to Pause to Pray today. So I'm coming to you from Washington DC. Let me know where you are joining from. What's kind of fun is, is uh, you guys who join me every week on Pause to Pray from my home in Georgia, I have a little photo above me, not a photo, but a a painting, if you will, of the Capitol. And, and now today, the actual Capitol is sitting right over my shoulder. I just thought that was fun. Thought y'all would enjoy the view and getting to see what the Lord is doing. And actually, I'm going to share uh, today at the end, if you'll stick with me, I'm going to share a very brief story and testimony um, of, of why it's so significant that the Lord has us uh, living in Washington, D.C. right now. So stay tuned for that story. I actually have a brief amount of time today because we've got to be on the road and we're headed out of town today, back home. Um, so I'm going to do as brief a pause to pray as I possibly can. We're going to try to do 15, 20 minutes here and wrap it up. Let me say hello very briefly and I'm just going to dive right in. Thank you, Cynthia. We have actually had a really wonderful time uh, Kara is joining in Nevada, Mary in New Mexico, Joanne from Northern Nevada, Chris in Kansas City, Shotzi from Tampa, good morning to you, Gretchen from New Mexico, Rose from Indiana, Peggy from upstate New York, thank you. Yes, it is a beautiful view, Joe. We are so blessed and really, really grateful. It's only, it's, it's the Lord. I mean, it's, it's just the Lord. There is literally no way we could have done this without him. Uh, Kat is praying from Georgia, Paula from Tampa, Mary from Texas, Joe has moved from Georgia to Kentucky, Gail in Nebraska. Okay. Praying for your, uh, election there and Liz in New Hampshire. Thank you guys for joining. Grateful that you guys can join live today. Washington, D.C., right back behind me from our appoint apartment here up near Capitol Hill in the Navy Yard. So welcome to you guys. So we are in Isaiah chapter 29. I'm going to dive right in because I do have a limited amount of time today. And huh, yeah, and I'm grateful to be joining you guys. So with that, I'm going to dive right in. I'm reading out of the Passion Translation today, Isaiah chapter 29. So grab your Bibles. Oh, thanks. Yes, got some fun earrings on today. My hair's a little bit nuts today too, but that's okay. We're going with it. All right, you guys ready? We're going to dive right in. Uh, we talked last week, Isaiah chapter 28, incredible chapter about the Lord tearing down the covenant with death and hell that the rulers and leaders of the day had made a pact with the enemy. Today, he's, he dives right in, speaking a judgment to Ariel. He says, Woe to you, Ariel. Ariel, the town where David encamped. He says, Go ahead, keep your annual feast, and year after year, celebrate your annual festivals. Because I will bring distress to Ariel and there will be great mourning. And we're going to talk about why that is as we go on in the chapter. He says, Jerusalem will be to me like what the name Ariel means. It means a burning altar hearth. He's going to, he says, I'm going to make you like what your name means, a burning 
altar hearth, the place of sacrifice, the place where they brought their sacrifices to be burned as an offering to the Lord. He says, I will make you like that. Verse three, I will lay siege to you on all sides, encircling you with towers and raising up my siege works against you. Brought low, you will speak from the dust of the earth. Your voice will be heard speaking from the ground and like the voice of a ghost, you will whisper out of the dust. It's a really interesting picture because he says to you, I'm going to make you like the hearth of an altar, right? And this, this picture here is like you're speaking out of the dust. It almost gives me that image of speaking out of the ashes. I'm going to make you a people that is like the dust of the hearth of the altar where the sacrifices are brought to be burnt. It's a great picture. Verse five, I want to talk to you today about this word because this was really highlighted to me. He says, then suddenly, Suddenly in an instant, right? Because the Lord is bringing the, na the nations against Jerusalem, against Israel. But he says in verse five, but then suddenly in an instant, your ruthless enemies will become nothing more than dust in the wind, which I actually really happened to like that song by Kansas. Dust in the wind, your ruthless enemies will become nothing more than dust in the wind and your vile tyrants like wind driven chaff. So he says to Israel, I'm going to make you like the dust of the hearth of the altar, but in an instant, I will transform your enemies, your ruthless enemies into the du to dust in the wind and your vile tyrants like the wind driven chaff. Verse six, for she will be visited by the Lord Yahweh, commander of angel armies with thunder, earthquake and deafening noise with whirlwind, tempest and the blaze of a consuming fire. As quickly as a fading dream or as fleeting as a vision of the night, so will all the vast hordes of all the nations fade away and all who war against Ariel and her fortress disappear. Just as a hungry man dreams that he is eating but wakes up still hungry, or as a thirsty man dreams that he is drinking but wakes up weak and still longing for water, so it will be for the vast hordes of all the nations that fight against Mount Zion. So it's going to be like you've woken up from a dream. You feel like in these dreams that, that you need something. You wake up thirsting, but you wake up still thirsty. Just as in a dream, in an instant, in a moment, these things are going to be fleeting and they're going to disappear. How many of you have felt like you have been living out a nightmare? That we have been living in the twilight zone, right? That there's so, I just feel like the Lord's like, in an instant, this is going to all feel like a dream. This is all going to change suddenly. Remember, suddenly. Okay, I want to come back to that because that's the word the Lord really highlighted to me this week. Suddenlies, Okay. Verse nine, be totally shocked and amazed by what I am about to say to you. This is what he says. Blind yourselves and be totally blind. They are drunk, but not from wine. They stagger, but not from hard liquor. For Yahweh has poured out over you the spirit of a deep, deep sleep putting the covers over your slumbering seers and rocking all your prophets to sleep. That is really interesting to me that the Lord himself has poured a deep, deep sleep over the nation of Israel, almost as if they're drunk because, um, well, again, we're going to come to the because here in a moment. Why has the Lord done this? Why has he put a deep sleep over them? And he even says, you're going to be totally shocked and amazed by this. And so many of us have been calling for awakening and, and wanting people to wake up. And I think it's interesting that the Lord has caused many of these to fall asleep. Now, of course, many of us are awake. Many of us are tuned in. Many of our hearts are not far from the Lord. Many of our hearts are very, very near to the Lord. But why has the Lord put a deep, deep sleep over many of the people of the nation of Israel? He says, this entire prophetic revelation will become to you like the words of a sealed book. 
it, if it's given to one who can read it with the command, read this, he responds, quote, I can't because it's sealed. Or if it's given to one who is illiterate with the command, read this, he responds, I can't because I cannot read. This is what the Lord says about these people. So this is why he's put them over a deep sleep and he's given them prophetic revelation, but they can't even read it and understand it. Why? Because this is what the Lord says about them. This is why. They come, we, many of us know this verse. They come near to me with hollow words and honor me superficially with their lips. All the while, their hearts run far away from me. Their worship is nothing more than man-made rules. I'm gonna read that out of the Amplified. This is a really famous verse, Isaiah 29, verse 13. Because this nation approaches me only with their words and honors me only with their lip service, but they remove their hearts far from me and their reverence for me is a tradition that is learned by rote without any regard for its meaning. I think this condemnation that the Lord is releasing here is so true about our nation, so true in general about our nation, that this nation uh, who has such a rich history like Israel does, such a rich history and foundations in the Lord, covenant root foundations in the Lord, and yet their hearts, our hearts in general. How many people in our nation, how many leaders of our nation honor the Lord with their lips, but their hearts are so, so far from him. They're unwilling to be corrected by him. They're unwilling to be pruned and to grow and be fruitful by him. This condemnation is accurate for our nation, and it is why we are in the situation that we're in. It's why the Lord has brought us into a deep, deep sleep and has brought the nations, like the Babylonian globalist spirit nations, to come against us. Why? Because we have to be healed. We need to return to the Lord. We need to become like the altar hearth once again. We need to be humbled to that place where we are willing to offer our lives up as a living sacrifice to the Lord. But because our nation is marked by lip service and our hearts are far from him, he's brought us to this point. But he's not brought us to this point because he's a mean God. He's brought us to this point because like Israel, the Lord loves this land. So listen to what he says in verse 14. Y'all, this, this is fascinating to me and exciting to me because this is what I believe the Lord is doing. Why has he rocked us to sleep? Because there's a suddenly that's coming. He says, so therefore... I will again jolt this people awake with astonishing wonders upon wonders. And the wisdom of their wise ones will fail and the intelligent know-it-alls will have no explanations. The Lord is jolting this nation awake. In a moment, in an instant, in a suddenly, he is going to jolt this nation awake with what? His astonishing wonders upon wonders. Y'all, I know it's hard in the midst of this. I know it's hard in the waiting sometimes to see the purpose of the Lord. But I know that is why he's brought us to the book of Isaiah so that we will remember that this is what he is doing. He has caused this nation to fall asleep because their hearts are far from him and they're only honoring him with their lips. But he is going to bring a suddenly jolting awake moment for this nation. Let me continue. Oh, because this condemnation is real and it is appropriate for right now. Listen to some of these condemnations. He says, woe to you who think you can hide your plan from the Lord Yahweh. Ha, do you actually think your secret schemes are so hidden that you say who sees us doing this? No one knows what we're doing. The Lord says, Ho, oh, how great is your perversion. Who is more intelligent, the potter or the clay? Should a created thing say to its creator, you didn't make me? And should a clay say to the potter, you don't understand? For brevity's sake, I'm just going to pass over that. But that's that you could, t- you could teach a whole sermon on just that verse right there. Verse 17, before you know it. And here comes the hope-filled words. 
Okay, here's the, here's the awakening that's being promised. Before you know it, Lebanon will be transformed into a fruitful field and the fruitful field will seem like a forest. Right now, there's devastation. Right now, there's pruning. But the pruning is so that the, there will be a fruitful field and it will seem, it'll be so fruitful that it'll seem like a forest. I love perspective. I love the big picture that God sees that we don't see. We see what's right in front of us right now, but the Lord says, look, in a little while, and just a little while, and I actually think that's what the, um, yeah, the, the Amplified says, is it not yet a very little while until Lebanon will be turned into a fertile field and the fertile field regarded as a forest? In just a little while, this is what it's going to look like. So don't focus so much on the right now. Think of the hope and the fruit that is coming from this. Verse 18, in that day, the deaf will begin to hear the words that have been written. And out of the darkness and gloom, the eyes of the blind will be opened to see. Do you guys believe this? Do you guys believe that this is what is coming for our nation? That what he did for Israel and his people that were covenanted to him, he is doing for this nation that also is covenanted to him? This is what the Lord is doing. If you don't have hope and faith for this, receive it today fresh from these words. The meek will overflow with fresh joy in the Lord Yahweh, and the poor will shout their praises to the Holy One of Israel. I like these promises right here. For the terrible one, because these are timely. Listen to how timely these verses are, even for this week, because we all know what's going down right now, right? For the terrible one will be no more. And the scornful jester will not be found. And all the lovers of evil will be cut off. Those who make the innocent appear guilty. Those who ensnare others with deceitful tactics. And those who lie to keep the innocent from getting justice will likewise be destroyed. Amen? Receive it by faith, declare it by faith, pray it by faith. The Lord will deal with those who are ensnaring to keep the innocent from receiving their justice, to make the innocent appear guilty. I'm going to wrap it up here, and then I'm going to share a brief testimony. Verse 22, so now listen to what Yahweh, the God of Israel, who redeemed Abraham, has to say to Jacob's tribe. My people will no longer be disgraced and your shame face will disappear. For when they see the miracle of the many children that I give them, they will see me as holy and honor me. Yes, they will honor the Holy One of Jacob and stand in awe of the God of Israel. Those who are in spiritual error will come to understanding. And those who are always complaining will be glad to accept instruction. Receive those words by faith today. The Lord is transforming this land. We need it desperately. We need the moments that we have been waiting for. And so I want to just speak a brief word of encouragement today. Um, As we're wrapping up, I want to share uh, just a testimony and the timeliness of this week that we're in. And then I'm going to be done. Oh, my family's coming home. Can you please take her out? Can you please take her out for me? I'm not done. I'm almost done, but I'm not quite done. All right, my family just got back from shampooing the puppy. So, the suddenlies. The suddenlies that the Lord is doing. Because while we are waiting, many times we grow impatient and we give up and we think the Lord's not doing the thing that he's promised that he would do. So what's interesting about um, this week this month in particular, and the fact that I'm sitting here living in an apartment in Washington, D.C., is 15 years ago this very month. Um, My husband Adam and I, we were freshly married. We'd been married for six months. Interestingly enough, we both had a call to Washington, D.C. before we even met each other. And I'm going to share this as briefly as possible because I do need to wrap up. But um, we'd been married for six months and our best friends had just moved here. And so we said, let's just go out to D.C. and let's just ask the Lord 
if we're supposed to move here, if it's time for us to come and live in the land. And so we came here to answer the call. Uh, literally 15 years ago in April, we came here. I don't have the exact dates. I wish I could remember. We'll, we'll probably find it, but I don't have it just yet. But the Lord had put it in our hearts that we would someday be living in this land. And we had no connections. We knew nobody. We had no ends. It was just, it was a pipe dream at the time, but we knew the Lord had spoken it. And so for the last 15 years, we have just walked by faith. We've never tried to make it happen. We've never tried to move to the city. And we did say yes 15 years ago. There was a real specific day that we said yes, and it was powerful. We came home from that trip and actually found out we were pregnant with our first child. And so we knew we weren't supposed to leave Texas where we were living at the time, where all of the family was. And so we've just waited for 15 years and the Lord had said and put these big things in our heart. And we just said, Lord, we can't make this happen. If you want to do this, you've got to, you've got to make it happen. And so it's just been really sweet this week to be back here 15 years later, to just walk in the land, Adam with a full-time job in the city, us with an apartment in the city, three grown children. None of this existed 15 years ago. Um, but today we're walking in the fruit of things that the Lord spoke and promised that we couldn't make happen. But he had it in his heart. He had a dream for us. And all we've done is walk with open hands and say yes along the way. And this is not to brag on us or anything. This is to brag on the Lord. When the Lord speaks something to us, if we will just continue to say yes, keep our hands and our hearts open to him, don't honor him with your lips and keep your hearts far from him, Wait for those moments when the suddenlies happen, because this has taken 15 years. And all of a sudden, over the last few months, these things have lined up and fallen into place for us, and we've just had to be ready to go. Um, but we've also had to believe and continue to say yes. And so I just encourage you guys today, as we are waiting for justice in our nation, as we are waiting for healing, the Lord sits with us. I was listening to this song today by Amanda Cook. It's called While We Wait. And it says, you're, you're with us while we wait. You're with us as we wait for better days. You're with us while we're waiting for the healing to happen. And he is with us. And I just encourage you today. I want to minister to you today. Fresh hope, patience, um, and that yes, to continue to honor the Lord, not with your lips, but in your heart, to truly honor him and know that he will do the things that he has said. He has not led us. He's not, he's not started million voices to intercede for this nation because he's going to destroy it. He raised up people, million voices being just one of them. There's so many people that are praying for the healing of this land, interceding for all of the wickedness and darkness that's going on, that those strongholds are coming down. And we're watching those things shift in the spirit. So I just encourage you all today to receive the faithfulness of the Lord. He is so faithful. I have sat at and stared out my window this week and just cried thinking you are overwhelming me right now with your faithfulness because you have said things that were too big for me to accomplish and you've just faithfully done them. So I just wanna pray and minister to you guys today. I hope that Isaiah 29 um, has ministered to you and encouraged you like it has me this week. It's given me fresh hope that he sees it all. He sees the ones whose hearts are far from him. He sees the injustices that are happening. Their plans are not hidden from him. He sees it all, right? He is the potter. We are merely the clay. So let me pray for you today to just receive from him a fresh hope of the Lord's faithfulness that he is doing what he has said he is going to do and he is going to heal this land. So God, we thank you today for these fresh words of encouragement. I thank you for testimony. I thank you for ancient words that are coming alive before our very eyes. I pray for a fresh hope and an increase of faith to receive today your faithfulness to us that you are far above it all, that you are the potter and we are merely the clay. And God, we want today to be the clay that is moldable and shapeable by you, that you can come in and work in us a story that we've never even imagined for ourselves, that you would create in us such a beautiful creation 
that if we just stay moldable, if we just stay soft and moldable towards you, that you will work a piece of art in us that we never imagined possible because it's not about us, it's about you. It's about who you are in your ability, not ours. So God, we rest today in your faithfulness. We know that you are with us while we wait. As you are working out the salvation of this land, you are with us. And so, God, I just ask today that you would move, that you would move suddenly and quickly, that you would cut off in an instant the vile tyrants that are running this land that you have caused to come under a deep sleep that have no knowledge, really, Lord, of even what you're doing, because you are so sovereign and high above it all. We worship you, God. Jesus, you are the king of this nation. You are ruling and reigning. You are magnificent and glorious. And we invite you to come and work your mighty wonders in this land. And we will wait for you to work in the suddenly moments. That you will make this nation a fruitful land once again. And she will be so fruitful, she will seem to be like a forest of fruitfulness. We speak blessing over this nation. I speak blessing over Capitol Hill that this land would once again become fruitful to the Lord and it would be so fruitful in just a little while it will be like a forest. I know it's hard to see in the natural but it's not hard to see in the spirit. It is not hard to see the things that the Lord is promising. We open our eyes to see because we know the one who is promising. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Thank you for these faithful people that are faith-filled and ever-increasing and growing in their faith, even today, God, receiving new things. We love you, Lord. We bless you. We trust you. We grow. We allow ourselves to be pruned and molded by you. We ask all of this according to your name and your will and your ability to accomplish. Amen. Melody, seeing your comment, yes, Lord, you didn't raise up intercessors only to abandon this nation. You always finish what you start. Amen? Amen. Y'all, happy resurrection weekend. Happy Passover. Um, man, we are coming into such an important time. So I just encourage you all to stay faithful in the Lord. Keep your hearts near him. Do not honor him with your lips and not honor him in your heart. Okay. Y'all have a wonderful day and we will see you tomorrow for another pause to pray. Thanks for joining.